Disclaimer, picric acid or trinitrophenol is an energetic substance, so please don't attempt to recreate anything that you'll see in this video. I have to talk with YouTube for a second, so if you're not to YouTube, skip to 032. This video is in accordance with YouTube's firing policy, and as you can see in this little animation that I've prepared here, there are also many other channels that have done videos about this topic. Today's subject. Turning aspirin into an explosive known as picric acid. And now you might be asking how is it even possible to turn a medicine into an explosive and it's because both aspirin or ASA and picric acid or TNP aren't that chemically different from each other. As you can see it's just a carboxyl group which should be easy to change into a hydroxyl group and this acetyl group that is easy to remove. Then these other nitro groups are easy to add. But before we start turning the aspirin into picric acid we have to actually get the aspirin from the tablet. That's because one of these aspirin tablets contains only 400 milligrams or 11.11% aspirin. The rest is mostly starch, sugars, digestive aids, and other binding agents. And so how do we get aspirin or ASA from the aspirin tablets? Well thankfully it's quite simple, I just have to do a solvent extraction. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let's start with the first step in the synthesis, getting the aspirin into a usable form. So to get the aspirin into a usable form I have to take the tablets out of those little pouches. I then crush them up with a mortar and pestle to get a fine powder. So now I have some aspirin powder but to get the ASA from the powder I have to perform a solvent extraction. But I still haven't explained what a solvent extraction actually is. Well, the whole idea is that the ASA will dissolve into the solvent, but the starches, sugars, digestive aids, and the other stuff will not. There are many available choices for the solvent, such as isopropanol, acetone, ethanol, and many more, but for this video I'll be using some acetone. To start, I will cover the powder with just enough acetone so that it's slightly submerged. The less acetone used during this part, the better. Now that I added everything that I need, I can start. So I let the mixture dissolve for a few minutes under constant stirring and added a little bit more acetone. The amount of acetone that I added is a bit excessive, but I just wanted to make sure that I get all the ASA out of the powder. Alright, so now that I've added an absurd amount of solvent, I'm very confident that all the ASA that could have been extracted has been extracted. To separate the solver from the remnants of the aspirin tablets, I will filter everything and collect the filtrate. But it wouldn't be a salt and peroxide video without me making a very dumb mistake. Oh shit, it's leaking. Oh fuck. Okay, so I have the filtrate, but now I have to get rid of the acetone. Luckily, acetone evaporates quite fast, but with this large of an amount, it can take quite a while. So to speed up the evaporation process, I lightly heat the solution with a hot plate, and I also provide good airflow with a ventilator. Ideally, I'd use a roto vab, but since I don't have one, this rudimentary setup will have to suffice. Alright, so there's not much more to do than wait. But while we're waiting, you can also go check out our Discord server. If you didn't know, I have a Discord server with two of my friends, Jam Chemist and Mr. Yellow. And if you'd like to support me even more, then there's also a Patreon where you can get access to exclusive videos and teasers. You also get to see all videos 48 hours before they release. Anyways, that's enough self-promotion, let's get on with the actual video. Okay, so majority of the acetone has evaporated. I'll transfer the remaining liquid to a beaker and heat the solution till the acetone is nearly gone. And now I'll just let it cool and crystallize. Alright, so now that I have some nice pure aspirin crystals, I'll crush them into a powder and I'll weigh them to measure my yield, which I'll show on the top right corner of the screen. The next step in the synthesis is sulfonating the acetosalicylic acid, which is when you add a sulfonic acid group to the ASA to turn it into 5-sulfosalicylic acid, otherwise known as 5-sulfo-2-hydroxybenzoic acid. Another thing that happens during this step is the acetyl group being removed and resulting in the formation of some low concentration acetic acid, and is the reason for the faint vinegary smell during this step. So now there's only one more step left, adding the nitro groups. There are two ways of doing this, A using potassium nitrate or B using red fuming nitric acid. Now I have to purify the TMP. To do this I'll perform a basic crystallization. I also wanted to do a time lapse so here we have one. Perfect, now I have some clean TNP. But as you can see, it isn't that energetic. Sure, it has some energetic properties, such as it explodes when confined and burns quite well, but nothing really special. But it can be made much more energetic and dangerous through the use of its salts, known as picrates. A majority of picrates are metal picrates, but there are a handful of non-metal picrates, such as the most produced picrates of all time, dunite, which is the ammonia salt of TNP. But there are a few other non-metal picrates, which I will not make, but are worth mentioning, such 
such as methyl ammonium picrate, ethyl ammonium picrate, hydrazine picrate, guanidinium picrate, and urea picrate. There are three main ways of making picrate, sulfurates, carbonates, or hydroxides. The first picrate I'll be making is dunite. It's a non-metal ammonia paste picrate and it's very simple to make. The first step is creating a concentrated solution of TNP by adding some picric acid into some hot or boiling water so that it dissolves better. Then I add some ammonia to the solution until the dunite starts to precipitate out. I stop adding ammonia when the pH gets basic or the dunite stops precipitating. But currently a majority of the dunite is dissolved into the solution. So to get as much of it out as possible, I will cool down the solution with some ice water. Now just to filter the solution, dry it in a desiccator and then finally light it. And the other picrate I'll be making is sodium picrate. The first thing I need to make it is sodium carbonate, but I don't have any. <laughs> Luckily, I do have some sodium bicarbonate. So what I'm gonna do is cook the sodium bicarbonate by heating it on top of the stove. Now I just add this sodium carbonate into a solution of TNP and I keep adding the carbonate till the solution stops bubbling. Then I filter the sodium picrate, dry it and then light it. Thanks for watching the video till the end, and for those who are interested, go check out my friend Jam Chemist. He has a video about making a bunch of pick rates which I didn't cover. Also, go check out my second channel, Peroxides Without Salts. And sorry for taking six months to make this video. I got distracted by making a bunch of pick rates which I didn't even end up covering. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the remainder of your day, and goodbye.